But the truth of the matter is that people come through the poverty culture who live through the uh, challenges of poverty really have a chance at life because in that community there's a care that poor people have for each other that affluent people don't have for each other. When you're born in hunger and born in difficulty, you always take time out to look and see how's your neighbor doing. Uh, when good fortune came my way, I was amazed uh, how many people didn't want to deal with poverty, didn't want to think about it, didn't want to do anything about it. And when good fortune did smile on me, I felt that uh, with all of this good fortune, uh, all of this power, all of this opportunity to use the platform that was given to me, that I should uh, make it turn out to be not a wasted time. What are you most proud about in the life of Harry Belafonte? Well, first of all, let me hasten to say that although I'm 90, it's not over yet. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Nowhere near. No, I'm saying that to myself. All right. I, well, I booked you for your 100th birthday on this show, so you, okay. you got a new more that I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm betting on. The thing that I am most proud of, I don't know if it's pride is, is even the correct uh, view. I am very, very fortunate that uh, I should have had the coincidences that I've had in my life. I remember when I first thought about theater, becoming an artist, I landed in a place in Harlem called the Schoenberg Theater, a group called the American Negro Theater. And it was in this place that I met Sidney Poitier, in this place that I met Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee. And with that kind of launching, the best thing that happened to us is that in the midst of a play, uh, in walked an icon, a man who took time out to see what these young black people were doing with the theater. His name was Paul Robeson. And uh, the time that he spent with us, the time that he uh, uh, praised us, the time that he told us that uh, having chosen a life in the arts was an opportunity that uh, should be uh, applied fully. I listened to him. And I followed his example. And uh, I thought that the values that he put on the table, the sacrifices that he made, were the kinds of things that I wanted to do with my life. Uh, this country was very cruel to him. Yes. Uh, they, 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 they did not give him the space that he deserved to be fully uh, the icon that he was. But he touched the lives of many. And I'm one of the disciples of his, of his. Then to have him, to have Eleanor Roosevelt, who Paul knew, Mr. Robeson knew very well. She graced us with her sense of life and sense of uh, uh, honor. Uh, then to meet Dr. King, to meet Bobby Kennedy, to have met all of these people who choose to let me uh, have time in their space was a gift. And I tried to use that association and that platform to turn this world around from the acts of evil that it consumed us so powerfully to try to make it just all a little bit better. Well, you've done that. Thank you so much, Mr. Belafonte, for being with us. A reminder, Harry Belafonte will join us here in New York at the National Action Network Convention in the first national convention in the era of President Trump. Just 10 days away, April 26th, we're coming together and honoring him as we kick off, featuring the best of civil rights leaders, elected officials, business executives, grassroots activists, clergy, and more. Go and sign up. It's free. www.nationalactionnetwork.net. We'll be right back.